مرحبا بكم في برنامج مرحبا الصين انا ساره مقدمه البرنامج مع تزايد اهتمام الناس بالحيوانات النادره استخدم الكثير من الاصدقاء في انحاء العالم اساليب اكثر احترافا لدراسه وحمايه الباندا العملاقه ما هي ايضا الاعمال التي يقومون بها دعونا اليوم نتعرف على متطوع في مجال الرياع الباندا قادم من الولايات المتحده ونتعرف من خلال عمله على بعض المعلومات تحول تربيه الباندا الى عملاقه The scientific research team of Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding is an international team with experts from all over the world serving as academic members or consultants of the base. It has established long-term international cooperative breeding programs with Japan, the United States, Spain, France, Canada, Germany and Denmark. James, an animal behaviorist from the United States, has been working in a laboratory at the Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding for nine years, researching giant panda behavior and animal welfare. It helps us manage them better, so that we can get very, you know, we can get very close to him, and I can check his body condition, see if he has any problems, if he's sick. Good boy, Jimmy. So watch, Jimmy, home. Good boy. Come over here. If you can do things consistently, then we can, you know, make sure everything is safe, and I can tell any change in his behavior and know how to adjust accordingly. I love what I do, and I, you know, I say I want to keep doing it. Hi, Milan. Nice to meet you. I'm James. How are you doing? I'm good. Her name is Yaju. She's really unique. Her face is kind of round,、mm-hmm. and she has a really big overbite. So like her jaw kind of pops out over her mouth. Yes, because like if we actually look at pandas, they look the same to us. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> it's really hard to identify them.、Um, mm. The interesting thing is some of my colleagues have been working on AI programs、mm. to identify pandas by their face markings、mm. and their body markings. She's she's such a cutie. Yeah. Now, this is some. So, this is environmental enrichment.、Mm-hmm. You were talking about the enrichment, right? So, why do you think it's important? So. Enrichment has a lot of different functions. One of the key things is is the panda's environment is so complex. You know, we provide them with trees, we provide them with rock structures, but we can never really mimic the exact complexity of the environment. So what we try to do is add enrichment to add more complexity、uh, and give them things to do. When animals get bored in captivity. They develop all kinds of behavioral problems.、Mm-hmm. So enrichment is really designed to tackle behavior problems、mm-hmm. and help their welfare. So basically, we are preventing them from getting bored. Yeah, we got to keep、so、them active. Just like、yeah. you said, they're like kids, right? If you take、mm-hmm. toys away from kids, they start having all sorts of problems. They misbehave、mm-hmm. and they're unhappy.、Yes. So it's essentially the same, like giving them toys. Well, that's quite interesting. Do you want to walk around and talk about it further? Yeah, sure. Why don't we go have a seat by another、yeah. panda? We can yeah, talk sure, about him. sure. And how can it help in?、Uh, Panda conservation. The two things I focus on are looking at breeding behaviors、mm-hmm. and also animal personality. Right? People think that animals are all the same,、mm-hmm. but actually, there's a lot of individual differences in their personalities.、Mm-hmm. So what I look at is how personality affects their breeding behaviors, which helps us improve breeding、mm-hmm. and also increase the population of captive giant pandas. From your point of view, why is panda conservation so important? When we talk about conservation. We use terms like panda conservation, and in that sense, the panda is an umbrella species and also a flagship species. So it draws attention to conservation. But you know, over the years, we found you really can't conserve a single species, right? You need to conserve the entire environment, the entire communities, right? So in this sense, pandas become a talking point for conserving other species in Sichuan. When they created now the Giant Panda National Park. That covers a huge expanse of land that will protect all of these species, including the rare trees and all the other animals that you know that are not as famous as pandas.、Mm-hmm. So pandas kind of are a jumping point for conservation in general,、mm-hmm. but to conserve so many other parts of the environment.、Mm-hmm. And now we have some questions from our audience worldwide. Let's see what our guests think. A lot of people, <laughs> right? Uh, 一般来说，一个饲养员要照顾两只大熊猫。除了接触熊猫最多的饲养员，嗯
，嗯，其实就是兽医，还有就是一些科研人员。其实除此之外的话，还有很多后勤保障工作，比如说大熊猫的食物的供给啊，那些运输的人员，来乃至我们整个园区对外展示的科普那种效果，比如科普工作人员，还有就是包括园林基建的各方面人员。其实算上来，杂七杂八，应该是很多很多很多的。When we do really complicated、um, training, especially for veterinary examinations, we all have to work together. 比如说，他负责驯化驯化动物，然后当就是动物，然后有个好的反应，然后他把驯化的各方面的技巧，然后传授给更多的饲养员，让饲养员才能就负责更多的驯化更多的动物。驯化之后呢，然后兽医的话可以进行一些检查，然后采血，然后包括的注射、打针，这些都是在这些基础上，然后才进行操作的。I try to speak to them in Chinese, <laughs> but they、uh, they pick up more on our our expressions and our our like our general feelings more. Than what we say, they're very sensitive to sound. But we use hand gestures all the time. You know, we all Abu and I, all the trainers, we use the same hand gesture. Like this will be open, right? And then the pandas recognize the hand gestures. 我平时跟熊猫要说普通话，偶尔要说四川话，假的四川话。<笑>我之前在日本的那个东京。那边的那个山野动物园，我在那边上班的时候，就一对熊猫从中国过来。那个时候，呃，就很多人对他们说日语，他们没有反应，所以我就多多跟他们说四川话。可能他们也比较舒服一点吧，我就感觉。نشكر هؤلاء المتطوعين الدوليين المهتمين على إجراءات العملية التي يتخذونها لرعاية الباندا العملاقة وحماية كوكبنا. كما نعرب عن تقديرنا وإحترامنا لكل عامل يعتني بجدية بالحيوانات النادرة، ونشكرهم على مساهماتهم في بناء الحضارة الأيكولوجية. حسناً، دعونا نلتقي في الحلقة القادمة.